Well, good evening, church family and those from our community or wherever you may be joining us from tonight. We're thrilled to have you join us for this time we call Midweek Manna. A chance to pause here in the middle of a week, a very busy week for many of us. Uh, we have a chance to pause in the middle of the week and reflect on God's Word together. We hope and trust your week is going well to this point. And uh, thank you for taking a few moments to be with us tonight. You know, I've noticed, I feel like, in this generation that's upcoming, as, as a, those of you that don't know, most of you know, I teach as an adjunct in the math department here at Troy University. And I've noticed this generation of students don't want to seem to follow directions very well. Uh, sometimes it's because they don't listen to directions, or sometimes they'll get on a test. And I notice that the things I may ask them to do on a test, they don't do or they don't do consistently. And I had to make note of that a few times. And to be quite honest with you, I've been tempted to do a test like was done to me one time in my growing up years. And most of you have seen this before. Perhaps you had it done to you before where you're given a test and at the top it says, make sure you read all the directions on this test all the way through before working or starting the problem or working the test. And so you read it through and it looks like a very, very normal test. And then you get to the very last page and the very last problem. And it may say something that effect up. All you have to do is to sign your name to this test and you will make a hundred. Don't worry about any of the other problems. Well, I've had a couple different tests I know in my growing up years. And one time I didn't do that. I ended up working through all the problems and got called at the end. I think I had one good moment where I did actually remember to do that. And sign my name and do what I was supposed to do. But I bring that up to say, even though I may get frustrated with this current generation of college students, the reality is my generation and more than likely your generation and previous generations and a pretty good chance generations to come are going to be the same way. None of us are going to be great as far as following instructions. Us men have been, have become known for and have been known over the years for not liking directions or following directions before even GPS or even a map. When we get in a car with our family and our wife may ask, do you know where we're going? And we say, sure. And about 30 minutes after we're supposed to get there, our wife will look at us and say, I thought you knew where you're going. Or they may want to stop and ask back in the old days. And we refuse to do that. Or we get something we have to put together. And a lot of times you, we throw those directions to the side and say, well, I know how to do this. So we get into it and realize there's a couple of pieces missing and why they're missing and have to go back and reread the directions. We, we all have that tendency, even us men seem to have that, but the reality is we all have that tendency. We think we've seen something before and so we know how to do it, or we've seen somebody else do it before and so we know how to do it, or we see something that looks normal and common and so we think we know how to do it and we don't pay attention to what we are being told to do. Well, God's people really and truly have always had that issue. I'm not necessarily paying attention to instructions or paying attention to directions. I think back even to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua, of course, being the book where God lets the Israelites go into the promised land and Moses has just died. In fact, more than likely, the Israelites don't know that Moses has died. God tells them that and tells Joshua that. And then as God is giving Joshua instructions, it's a very familiar verse. He says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will have, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. We read those verses, we're familiar with these verses, that section, that's not the only time in the Bible those words are found. Moses had similar words actually at the end of Deuteronomy, and they're Several different times in the book of Proverbs, even in other places, we find very similar wording of do what I say, don't turn from it, keep your path straight. All of those words that come to mind. 
It's kind of God's way of telling the Israelites, make sure you follow directions. And then for us as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we really have similar thoughts as well. Think about what Jesus said, particularly to the 12, but the principle I think holds true for us in his words in the upper room from John chapter 15. When he says, starting in verse 9, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that you, my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. full. He goes on to say in verse 12, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Jesus has words here, and very important words for us, even as disciples and followers of Jesus. He says, as fathers loved you, fathers loved me, I have loved you, so abide in my love. And he goes on to say, if you keep my commands, you will abide in his love. Now, there are several things we can point out from this passage, but there are three that I want to point out to you here. One, Jesus actually ties in keeping the commandments with love, really with love of, of God and love of Jesus. And he says, if you abide in my love, you want to keep my commandments. And if you, it kind of goes both ways. If you keep my commandments, you will be assured of abiding in my love. And so those times, maybe we find ourselves, which we, we all admit we do, thinking we know, well, we don't need to look. We know what the best way is. We've seen this situation before. We've seen other people, perhaps or other people we can get advice from. And so we get advice from others and don't necessarily follow the directions of God's word, if you will. And Jesus says that sometimes anyway, when that happens, it's not just a matter of disobedience. It's the issue may be love. That maybe we're not loving the Lord our God that our heart, soul, mind, and strength enough that we're willing to listen to him and follow his commands. And then Jesus says following his commands is not just tied in with love, it's also tied in with friendship. It's tied in with relationship. Of having a close relationship with God and having a close relationship with Jesus. You know, in a, in a humorous way somewhat, but also in a serious way, those of us that are blessed enough to be married, us husbands, if we don't, aren't hard-headed, we've learned enough over the years, we ought to do what our wives tell us to do. And a lot of times it's because our wives usually know what's best for us. And so maybe even though we might begrudgingly do it, we have the kind of relationship with our wife, the kind of friendship with our wife, that we want to listen to them and do what they tell us to do. I had a tooth out recently, and for those of you that know, when you've had a tooth out, you've had your wisdom teeth out, you've got a period of time, you're not supposed to drink out of a straw. And I was ready to drink out of a straw. I wanted to, and my wife kept saying, don't do it. You need to wait a week, wait a week. Well, I had to choose what did I want to do. Am I going to do what I wanted to do or listen to her? Knowing if I did what I wanted to do and it didn't go well, she would say, you should have listened to me. Well, thankfully I listened to her, and so far things are good. But when you have that kind of relationship, you have that kind of friendship, you listen to what the other person is saying. And Jesus says, if you have that kind of relationship with him, that kind of close friendship, you will do what he commands. You will listen to what he says. And so sometimes we, if we find ourselves not following the directions of God and Jesus, it may be because not just a love issue, it may also be a relationship issue even though obviously those two are tied together. But the third thing I want us to notice here is going back to what Jesus said earlier when he says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus is saying, look, I'm, I'm not asking you to do anything different than what I had to do. Jesus, Jesus acknowledged that he had to keep his Father's commandments. And in doing that, he had to abide in his Father's love. And it's almost like Jesus is saying, look, if I came to earth and I lived the perfect life and I had to do this, don't you think it makes sense for you to do it as well? Don't you think it makes sense for you to listen to the directions, to follow them, to not turn from the right 
or to the left to keep your path straight. And then he gives us a great assurance in here that if we do do that, he's encouraging us to do that so our joy may be full, our joy may be complete. Jesus says if you want full joy in life, it's best to follow the directions. You know, I remember that the first time I took that test and didn't read it all the way through and work through the problems and turned it in, I didn't get 100 on that test. Even though I think I probably did everything else right, to be honest with you, you're pretty close. It was pretty frustrating. By the time I did read all the way through it and signed my name and got 100, that made things pretty joyful. Now, it doesn't mean they're always going to be as easy as that time. That certainly means there's a sense of joy and peace when you do the things that you know you're supposed to do. And Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. If you consider yourself a friend of mine in a relationship with mine, keep my commands. I had to do it. You too. Listen to the directions. Pay attention to the directions. Read the directions, if you will. Do the things he tells us to do. And he promises a great promise that a joy will be complete. Well, just some thoughts for us tonight here in the middle of the week. A reminder to us, really, of a terrific passage from God's Word. And the importance of doing the things that God told the Israelites to do. And continues, even today, I'm convinced, to tell us to do as well. Let's make sure we listen to and follow God's commands and directions. Well, again, we thank you for taking a few moments to be with us tonight. I know it's a busy week. I know a lot of people have a lot going on. We have a lot of people in our church family still dealing with illness or sickness or recovering from surgeries, going through treatments. We're mindful of all of you that are doing that. If you're watching tonight, and thankful to have a few moments to, to join us through those times. For those who are not familiar with our Collegeville family, and maybe you're watching one of our recordings for the first time, or maybe you're watching it for the second, third, or tenth time, and but you haven't connected with us, we would love to hear from you. We'd love the chance to connect with you. We'd love a chance to share with you more about our church family here at Collegedale and encourage you to call our church office or send us an email or follow us on Facebook or Instagram or send us a message in those ways. we love an opportunity to connect with you and encourage you to do that. And, of course, for everybody, we invite you to and remind you to join us for our time together this Sunday. We will assemble for Bible classes at 9 a.m. here at the building. And then we, of course, have our worship at 10 a.m. here in the auditorium. Love for you to join us in person. But if you're unable to join us in person, we will be live streaming our worship through our YouTube channel at 10 a.m. And, of course, love to have you in that way if you're unable to be with us in person. Again, thank you for taking a few moments to be with us tonight. We hope you have a blessed rest of the week. Stay safe through all the weather. I know we're going to be having in our area and hope and encourage everybody to stay safe with that. Let's close our thoughts tonight in prayer. God, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for loving us and we thank you for the word you give us. And help us always remember the importance of your word and the great wisdom in your word and to know that you created us so you do <clears throat> truly know what is best for us. So help us remember to pay attention to it. To make sure if we have to choose between my way and your way, that we always should choose your way. Because that, that is truly what's best. Father, we are mindful of all of those that are going through tough times right now. That are dealing with uh, cancer, or treatment of cancer, or recovering from surgeries, or just general sickness. Some dealing with loss of loved ones that we know in our church family and our extended family and our community, we pray for you to wrap your arms around them and strengthen them and give them peace. Father, we are mindful of the ongoing situations throughout our country. I know it's a big week of uh, elections, and we're mindful of that this year. We, of course, lift that to you. We pray for decisions to be made that will continue to help us as your people live the lives you want us to live. We pray for wisdom with that. We're mindful of the ongoing situations in Ukraine and in Israel and Palestine and Middle East in general. We, we pray for folks or leaders there to have hearts that they will be guided in a way that will help peace happen soon. And Father, we do pray that as we elect, but also just those that are already elected, their hearts and minds will be open 
they will make those decisions that will allow us to shine the lights for you that you want us to shine, shine the light of your son Jesus, and have opportunity to share with others the good news about your son Jesus. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen.